Hi, I'd like to start the show with a song. New you, you, you. That's being offered by Dwayne Hepner. And it's for a person to test for themselves, like for 15 minutes before you go to sleep each evening and maybe... 15 minutes when you wake up in the morning and see what life shows you. That's the beginning steps to becoming more aware of what's real. And there's new books available to that are the first steps to, to read them and uh, <clears throat> find out for yourself what makes sense in your life. We're all here. We exist. How do we want to exist for this forever? Um, and the, this it, this song, the new you, you, you song, connects you with the real universes of sound and light where we all are free beings of real light. And we came here for a reason, and just about all of us have... Uh, aren't really aware of why we came here. We've forgotten or we're asleep to the reason why we came into this physical realm. And there's other realms, too, that it sounds like we have bodies on um, in this psychic realm stuff or what you call creation um, stuff. So... That's what's being offered, shared, is to find out for yourself by testing this new you, you, you song and reading the new books. See if it makes sense to you. If it is purity being offered in it and sincerity and humility and gratitude and Find out if it it's, gives you a purpose, why you came here. If you find your purpose, there's many projects that um, are in the process of becoming manifested here in the physical, like the all solar research vessel and the, um, to create rainforests and on earth and places. Um, for the benefit of all, they provide such things that we all need, like the oxygen we breathe. And um, I let um, we have Claudie Stockman from Corpus Christi, Texas with us today and Dean Val of Nations United Universal University. Um, Claudia, would you like to speak a little bit about the new presentation and the projects? Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. One of the things that's most um, challenging to me is working with the new youth sound in every single project or instance that I'm, I'm involved in. Sometimes I'm involved with others, family members, so on and so forth. And so before I speak, I ask on the real side, if the real guide, the Revisar Tars and Paul are my favorite, um, but there's Yabul Sakavi, Rami Nuri, uh, Shamasi Tabriz, Gopaltas, uh, all of the real guides. Karadaki, Tuart Managi, Fubi um, Quants, like C. These uh, guides are there to help us. We can ask questions. We can add on, on whatever subject we're studying or trying to 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 learn about, and ask for their help in in uh, in learning there. And then when we go as, go to sleep at night. Uh, just before bed, uh, you know, before sleep, 
do I, I I'm very limited. I only do three new use sessions uh and then go to sleep. That's new you 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 three times. And then I pose my question. Like uh, recently, I'm studying uh, the diet of uh, Hercules. Um, he was known to have a uh, special diet of seeds, nuts, fruit, dried fruits, um, uh, those sort of things. And he he uh, ate that exclusively. And it was in known in the biblical days as the sacred diet of Hercules. Now, I found out that uh, Pythagoras used to serve this meal to his uh, young people that were studying at his uh, uh, place to become to train for the Olympics. They would eat this specific food combination exclusively a month before the Olympics to build up their strength and and so forth. And uh, so I've been researching all kinds of grains, seeds, nuts, dried fruit, um, vegetables, all those things to uh, come up with a solution to uh, incorporate better health. So I ask every night what it was like when in the time of Pythagoras, what did he do in his training camp, and, and how did the people there fare on it? And uh, this comes back out of biblical references to uh, Daniel, Meshach, and Abednego when they were summoned by King Nebuchadnezzar uh, to come to his kingdom and uh, supply knowledge and information and wisdom and help him guide his, his kingdom. And uh, they refused to eat the king's food, uh, which had meat and vegetables, too. But they refused to eat it. They said, we only want one thing, uh, a diet of what I just described, seeds, nuts, uh, dried fruit, uh, uh, those sorts of things, and they and water. And that's all they ate. And uh, so the king said, I test you. Uh, do this for three months and come back and show me what your condition is. Well, he was amazed when he came back and saw the condition of these three, of these uh, four guys. They were, they were stronger and faster than his best athlete of the time. So I've been working with uh, Pythagoras. I asked the question, Mr. Pythagoras, what was it like during your time? And I had an interesting dream about the training camp. They would get up in the morning and grind up their seeds and uh, get their dried fruit and make a, a, a gruel and eat that every day for, for three years, I think. It, it was such an arduous training camp. Anyway, I, that's what I've been exploring with the new UUU uh, opportunity to talk to the real guides. I know this is not very spiritual, so to speak, but it's of interest in the sense that the body is being helped and conditioned to survive what we're going through right now. And on the planet Earth, with the amount of of toxins and so on and so forth in our air, our water, our food, food, it's very uh, challenging to keep yourself alive and going and, and functioning. Anyway, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go so long, but that's what I'm working on. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Claudie, for the information of what you're describing about the real guides and the the things that you're putting, you're focusing your attention on in this new presentation. Um, yeah, and you mentioned how these toxins that seem to be pretty much all over the earth now with many different ways. It seems like the, our air is being affected and our water is being affected and our food is being affected. All these things in the physical seem to um, have unbeneficial 
stuff going on for our human bodies. Um, when we think about our human body as one of the five bodies our real self has as um, these vehicles we're using here in, um, in creation, um, maybe Dean Val of Nations United Universal Use University would like to mention um, some about the new presentation and what he is experiencing or doing. Sure, Tim. Thank you. Uh, I'm with Claudie. Just to go back a little bit, what Claudie said about the new you, we do recommend or suggest people do it for 5, 10, 15 minutes before bed. I can... I only do it for three times as well. It's interesting that, Claudia, you do the same. But that's all it takes for me to uh, get tuned in, you could say. I just do the new you, you three times before bed. And then do a little mantra. Um, I don't usually ask questions, but I do a little mantra that it, it's like... I allow you to show me what I'm not aware of, or I, I'm willing for you to show me what I'm not aware of. I'm, I allow you to show me what I'm not recognizing. I'm willing to sh have you show me what I'm not recognizing. I put out this to life, or to whoever's listening, a real guide, or to life itself. And just usually I don't have trouble going to bed after that. So, and then I know of a fellow that does new you for, I mean, he literally does it for two or three hours, he said. So it's not necessarily the quantity. It's just uh, whatever you could say it's the quality or it's the, the um, intent behind it, but it's, it's whatever works for you. Whoever's listening about and how to do the new you sessions and sing the new you. It's it's up to you how you individually, how it works for you. Now, the other thing, you mentioned the projects. Well, that's another interesting thing because the projects are also very individual. And we can do pretty much what we want to do. It's It's a matter of aligning the projects with with uh, with life, what, what life is doing, and that and the way you do that is to sing the new you, and listen, and that'll connect you to something that will make sense with what you do with your project. You know, and it could be pretty much anything that makes sense, and that's the neat thing. Like you mentioned, Tim, that it's. It's our choice. Now, another thing, when people come into this, they sometimes expect to be told what to do. Like, okay, what can I do to help? That's normal and natural because that's what we're used to. We come into an organization or a path or something, and there's usually some kind of guidelines or, or some sort of uh, way about it. But this is unique in that... Uh, we have no restrictions. It's totally, you know, we have total freedom. And so you pretty much can decide what you want to do with what we have available here. And that's a lot for a lot. For some people, it's a lot because they're used to, again, being told what to do. So right then and there, it's like, well, what do I do? You know, they just are flabbergasted. They don't know what what to do with themselves. So even just deciding what to do, just coming up with something that makes sense for them and aligns itself with the betterment of everything, that in itself is a big big step for a person when they come into this. Uh, it seems very simple, but that's a big, big step toward becoming more aware because it shows you how, and it gets you out of this, framework, mind framework that, you know, somebody's going to tell you something because this is not like that at all. It's like, uh, it's a recognition of what just is and it's not about getting someplace or, 
having somebody tell you something where you get someplace, you know, you start doing something and moving towards something. Right right from the beginning, it's like it's your choice, your decision to do something, and that, that in itself will help you recognize what, what this is about. So the process is very interesting. It's, it's a lot different than what people are used to. So that, that's a start, Kim. Yeah, thanks, Val, for helping to um, share this information about the new presentation and the projects. And I see that we have, um, uh, is that Ariana that's on this call now? Are you there? We have um, a 715 prefix. If they have, if you have any questions or would like to um, mention anything, go right ahead. That would be the Sandy and Bob show guys. Oh, <laughs> yeah, hi, Bob. Hey yeah, guys. go ahead if you have something you'd like to share. Well, you know, uh, the thing that I would say to people that you know um, want to learn the truth is. Whatever is to um, to be to act on on whenever you're inspired to do something, act on it. Even if uh, the guides get you up in the middle of the night, get up there and start start doing. Because you know, as, as real beings of light, we're creators. And anytime we start creating, anytime we start doing something positive that's, you know, in the right direction, like make you know, doing programs to help make people more aware or doing things to improve the environment or planting a tree or no matter what it is, uh, and you're creating, um, you are becoming more aware. Just the simple act of doing and creating makes you more aware. And if you sit around and wonder about things and, and put a lot of time thinking about things, uh, it's like a vacuum cleaner that sucks you back into creation and away from what the real real side of life is all about. Yeah, thanks, Bob. 